Hello 3D printing world, Michael here from Go Engineer. In today's tech tip, I want to talk to you about the material loading and unloading on the high-end Stratasys FDM systems. Now, what I'm going to share with you today, the principles are going to apply whether you have a 900, a 450, 380, a 400, 360, heck, all the way back to the Titan class systems. The concepts are going to be the same for the actual loading and unloading of the material. Now, the GUI interface is going to be different on all those machines as to where you push the button for load and unload. But as far as the principal concepts for doing the actual practice of loading and unloading the material, that will apply across the board. Let's show you how it's done. Okay, so we're down by the system getting ready to load and unload material on this machine. Now the first thing you'll notice when you get a brand new canister is there's going to be a shipping plug underneath this foil tape. Now you're going to need to take this tape and peel it up, pull that small plug out, okay? Once this plug has been removed, you want to reseal that tape. Now one of the old tricks I've found over the years is to take that plug and actually use it as a flattening surface to adhere that tape back down. Again, we want to make sure this is secure so that we keep moisture out of these material canister bays. Keeping them dry is really going to be critical to your success building parts throughout the life of whatever material you have. Once that's been done, take your canister and flip it up. Okay, I would normally do this facing me, but for you, I'm going to put a little bit of an angle. The first thing you're going to want to do is to take this cap off of the top. Okay, this cap fits right on the front of the canister. Once that's done, you're going to want to open this door. When you open the door, you want to thumb wheel in and down, always. You always want to go down. So I'm going to apply pressure to this wheel and I'm going to roll it down. I'm going to roll down a couple of times until I get the material to start to come out. Now I'm going to take this material and pull out about a good foot of it. Why am I doing that? I'm trying to feel the spool turning in there. Once I know that the spool is turning, actually it goes in this direction, once I know it's turning, I can feel that it's free. I'm going to cut off enough to leave about four inches of material sticking out. Now, someone's going to panic thinking that this is wasted material, that I'm throwing away money that I've spent. No. <clears throat> Your canisters are wound, in this case, with over a hundred feet of extra material on each canister to account for eight or nine loads and unloads of material. You're not, you're not wasting any money by cutting this material off. Okay, so you take this material and you push it back flush and close the door. Again, leaving the brake on for right now. Now stepping up to your drive blocks. Your drive blocks can be engaged by pulling this pin. That will drop the drive block down. The EEPROM chips will then be engaged to the drive block. It will read that canister of material. Upon pushing these back up, this can be a little cumbersome to try to pull this pin and push it back into place. So when you engage it, a trick we've learned is just put your finger on the block, push it back up. So very easy to engage, very easy to disengage. Take the canister, slide it back into the bay. Once it's into the bay, pull the pin and wait three seconds. It's a rule of threes. You're going to get lots of threes here. So wait three seconds. There's a slight delay from when the chip has actually made contact to when it reads that the material is actually there and present. So give it a moment, open that front door, and again, Three, push in and down three times. So one, two, three. Slow flashing green light. That's loading the canister. Now where is this loaded? It's currently loaded right here to the drive block. This one you see has a steady green light. That means this one is loaded all the way into the head. It is already set to be building. This one is primed right here at the drive block. If you see clear, on a drive block, that means the material canister bay is empty. Now the only other color you're going to see is going to be red. On occasion you will see red show up. If it's a solid red, that also means the canister is empty. If it's a flashing red, there's a problem. And we can address that on a later video. If you have questions, call us at Go Engineer. This is a staged canister. From there, you want to pull out You want to pull out the brake. You can throw this piece of paper away, pull out the brake, and apply it to the front of the canister. Close the door. Why is this important to close that door? 
Again, I'm sealing the canister. I'm making sure that no moisture is being sucked in to that canister that could harm my material. This is a properly loaded canister of material. Now to remove the canisters, we're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna hop up and press a button and show you that in a moment about unloading a fully loaded canister. You can also unload one from right here that is a slow flashing green. The slow flashing green is just an opposite of what we just did. You open the front door, put your brake back in, close the front door. You then push up and slowly pull the canister out as it feeds the material. You will then clip off the rest of the material, put the cap back on, and a properly stored canister, once it's been removed, can be rested just like that back on your shelf. There's nothing else you have to do other than have it staged like this for future use. So with that, let's cover one more thing with you quick. When you get a used canister off of your shelf, you again always want to take the front clip off, open the door, and then press on the drive wheel. Now, an important tip, if you get to this drive wheel and you find that it just won't spin or it's not feeding material out, there's a little tiny spring clip, a little tiny clip right in here, okay? Take a screwdriver and just simply apply a good quarter of a turn to either one of those screws. It will loosen up that little spring clip's tension on the material, and it should make it easier to feed the material out, okay? Point of this, even if you have a canister that you've used before, always still pull out a foot of material. Feel that spool turning. Always make sure that it's free before you clip this off, push this back flush, and close that door. Why? I don't want to load a canister of material that might be cross-wound. So even if it's not new, always check before you load it. And again, slide it in, drop the pin, wait three seconds. Give it a three second wait, open the door, push in and down three times. One, two, three, and wait, green light, remove the brake, <laughs> maybe. Place it on the front, close the door, properly loaded canister. Now let's just show you the unload on this one. Now as a quick side note, what does it mean to have material unloaded on an FDM system pertaining to Stratasys products? Okay, unloaded does not mean that the material has been completely unloaded back into the canister. In fact, it never does that. Okay, unloaded on these systems, again, the ones I mentioned in the first part of the video, means that the material has been removed from the head, from the drive wheels in the head. Okay, some of the systems have an old switch indicator, some of them use resistance in the drive wheels, but it's all the same concept that it's at the head. The material is still up here at the head when it is technically unloaded. So just keep that in mind when you hear that term, what unloaded means on this machine. Okay, moving on. All right, so off of the main build screen, you're gonna have an option on this system to press on a button called tips. Now under tips, the most popular one you're gonna use is this first icon right here. This is the tip wizard. It will walk you through changing tips and materials. Pretty much anything you wanna do with the machine is gonna be under that button. But from there, if you want to manually load or unload material, you'll see these buttons will get highlighted once material canisters are loaded in them. And in this case, we have the button here for the support to unload it. So we're gonna go through the process manually as opposed to the wizard. Okay, so we got to the point where we're gonna unload this material. We're gonna press the unload button. It's gonna begin the process. The little blue line is gonna start moving, indicating we're removing the support material. When it goes orange, that's the indication that it's actually been unloaded from the system. All right, so we reached up and pressed the unload button on the GUI to tell the system to start unloading the material. Now you'll notice this one is a fast flashing green where this one is slow. So this one is telling us that the system is currently in operation of a procedure. So please, leave me alone. Don't mess with me. That's what that's saying. I'm happy, just leave me alone. This one is loaded right here at the drive block. We could take that one out. This one we don't want to touch until the system says, I am unloaded at the head. We already explained that to you. 
and then we can pull that canister out. So we'll just wait a few minutes for that to give us the indication up there that it's unloaded and we'll pull the canister out. Okay, so the screen has now told me that the material has been unloaded from the head. So at this point, in order to get this canister out and to clear that line from all that material, we need to remove this canister completely. How do we do that? It's the same process we showed you before. We open this door, put in the brake, and close the door. And again, fast flashing green means it's doing something. But again, according to the screen, it says I have been unloaded, so it's okay for us to take this out. So we will push up on the dry block and we will start pulling this out. Now you want to pull out slowly because it's gently feeding it. You don't want to sit there and wait. I don't want to push this up and then wait and not do anything because it's going to try to force that material back into the canister and currently there's nowhere for it to go. So we need to be able to push this up and slowly start pulling that canister out right away. Once you've done that, clip off the material from the canister so this is free. Take the plug, put it back on the top, and again as a refresher, that's how we store canisters for future use. Now we're gonna let this feed out, and once this is done in a moment, there's an important tip I wanna show you at the very end of this to verify that it has been unloaded correctly. Okay, so it just came out of the system. There's a small Dairy Queen, a little tiny string of material that's at the very tip of this. That little Dairy Queen indicates to me that this material has been fully removed from the actual tip. So there's nothing. I know there is nothing lodged anywhere in the tubing all the way out. I had a clean removal from the system. Now again, as an important note, you did not waste this material. You're not spending money on something that you're throwing away. This is all accounted for by Stratasys. It's extra round material on your canister, so don't feel bad. You didn't just throw away this money that you spent. The money that you paid for, for the 92.3 cubic inches on this spool, are on there for you to use and do not account for about eight or nine loads or unloads of material. So again, as a review, a clear or red, solid red, means the canister is empty. A slow flashing green is an indication to you that it's loaded right here to the dry block. Fast flashing green means it's doing something, I'm happy, leave me alone. Okay, a solid green would indicate that it's loaded all the way to the head. Those are your lights. Hopefully it's a good review of the dry blocks. That is the unloading and loading process of material on a high-end Stratasys system. Okay. Hopefully that gave you a better understanding about the loading and unloading process on your high-end Stratasys FDM system. If you have any other questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us at GoEngineer.com and like and subscribe to this video. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.